Hey everyone, I watched Justin and Rebecca Rhodes new docu-series video. Um, it's the, um, the first video to a series they're gonna have um, and I just wanted to talk about it a little bit, um, give my, my thoughts and my feelings and um, use this opportunity to express a little bit about why I do what I'm doing now um, because uh, I started making vlogs recently and I've always wanted to make them um, I just never really knew how or I didn't really think anyone would watch which I know it'll take a while for people to watch them but I don't know um, it's hard for me to talk on camera too <laughs> it feels really weird um, but their video, their life, their story really resonates with me. Um, it resonates with a lot of people. And I just want to share my story, I guess. Um, so, about, oh, let's see, 2000, around 2013, I really started investigating what was going on with our food and it started for me with how animals were being treated and I did not like the way that animals were being treated I didn't like that they were shoved in these small spaces and they were being given all of these vaccines and stuff because of how sick they were because of the conditions they were living in and realizing that there's a really big problem with the food that most people are consuming so to try to make this as short as I can um, in their video rooted in Justin's other videos like on YouTube um, he explains how he has Lyme disease and you know Rebecca talks about how that affects her and how how it affected her emotionally um, how it affected them financially and for me um, 2013 I was with someone else um, he was my husband and I was with him since I was 12 years old um, I don't really talk about him very much because it's a really difficult subject for me. We had been together almost 11 years and in 2013 I started researching our food because we knew that he was sick. Um, he had a rare bone marrow disease called Fanconi anemia and he was supposed to be going to get blood work drawn like once a month and we didn't have a lot of money so because he felt fine we didn't um, he didn't go to the doctor and I didn't encourage him to go as strongly as I wish I would have I started getting into gardening um, and I got some chicks from Tractor Supply. Um, I ended up getting two Nigerian dwarf goats. I got some rabbits that we were gonna use for meat. And we lived in the city. We lived in Columbus, Ohio. In the ghetto, basically, but it was a house that we owned. We were um, not rich by any means. <laughs> um, just starting out, uh, we had our first child, my first child, our only child together in 2011, and he was allergic to uh, cow milk at the time. He was lactose intolerant, and so I wanted to have the goats for milk and, um, you know, the chickens for eggs and meat and the rabbits for meat and I planted my first garden, and that was in the spring. And then 
Oh, about in the middle of the year sometime, um, things kind of fuzzy for me because I've purposefully blocked them out. Um, but he broke out in a rash and it was the shingles. Um, we went to the doctor. The doctor said, it's the shingles. Put this cream on it, you'll be fine. Um, I did my own researching, you know, Dr. Google Pants, and realized that he should not be breaking out in the shingles at like 26, 27 years old. I really convinced him to go to the hospital that day, um, and they pulled blood, and they came back and they pulled more blood, and they came back a third time to pull more blood, and I told them no. I said, what is going on? They pulled blood twice, and she said, well, something is wrong. It, the, the samples aren't right, so we need to run it again, and I said no. They are right, you know, he has a bone marrow disease, his blood doesn't look like most people's blood. To which she looked at me, and she looked at him, and she walked away. Shortly after that, the doctor came in, and he was very cold, and very, just cold, I guess, and he said, I don't know how you're awake and talking to us right now. Your platelets are so low. Most people would have fainted. Um, you only have 11,000 platelets. Um, normal people have between 200,000 and 400,000. But um, he said, I'm not really sure how you're awake and talking to us. It looks like you have leukemia. And you're probably not going to survive this. Do you have any kids? Fast forward through a lot of stuff. Um, we went to two different hospitals, one in Ohio, and then they said there were specialists out in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So we dropped everything um, and drove all the way to Minnesota. So much happened. Um, so much really bad, traumatizing stuff happened. And he ended up not, um, not coming home. He passed away there from unnecessary circumstances and I came home to a dead garden, an empty house. Um, I tried to hold that stuff together by myself. Um, but I couldn't, and I gave up, and my life was really dark for quite a while, and it's still hard. It's still something that I struggle with because it's not something that you ever get over. Um, you don't just get over it. But back to the, back to the point. Um, I'm just so tremendously happy for them. I'm so happy that they were able to overcome such grave and dark times. I know how scary it was for her and I can only imagine how hard it was for him. This is really hard. <laughs> and really awkward. 
because I'm alone in my car. <laughs> um, the determination that Justin has and Rebecca, you know, we, we mostly, I mostly see the videos from Justin's point of view and the determination that he has is something that I understand completely because I went from a very, very broken human. <laughs> I mean, to say that I didn't want to live is like an extreme understatement. And as much as I didn't want to live, I knew I had to for Nolan, for our son, I had to because only I could be his mother. I was his mother and I didn't want him to lose both parents. So I pulled myself together <laughs> um, and Another long story short, I met Anthony, and we have two beautiful children together. And now we are a family of five, and it is... My family is the reason why I work so hard every day. My family is the reason why I get up in the freezing cold and do these chores and mend fences and feed animals and I'm in the beginning stages of what I want to do. I want to follow Justin Rhodes and Joel Salatin's way of doing things, the abundant permaculture, the the using the animals to work the land, using the animals to do what they're supposed to do. It's really hard when you grew up in the city. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio. I had like a cat and a hamster and that was the extent of my animal experience. Um, <laughs> My mom started letting me get more exotic animals like ferrets and chinchillas um, when I was older, but they're not the same as a cow, okay? <laughs> they're not even close. I hope this makes sense. I'm kind of jumbling all over the place. I, I want to block out my past really bad. Um, so I'm sorry if this doesn't line up chronologically. Um, I have PTSD and anxiety and I shut down really hard sometimes and that's happening right now. So um, I just want to, I want to tell them thank you. Thank you for not giving up. Thank you for pushing through even though it seemed hopeless. Because I was really struggling with how I was going to make my farm work. We were right in the middle of fixing up our last house, looking for another home with more land or no land. I was about ready to give up. I was about ready to throw in the towel. I was having really bad experiences with horses. Um, I was ready to just give up. And I don't, I don't even know which video was my first video, but I found one of Justin's video and one video led to the next video, led to the next video, led to the next video. And I got transitioned from wanting to be like a horse trainer into COVID helped, uh, but into um, wanting to be self-sufficient, which I always did, but 
turning that into my business instead of trying to be a horse trainer when I have so little experience with horses. I mean, I was going to get myself killed. Um, thank you guys. Thank you guys for everything that you do. Thank you for letting us into your home to see how you do things. Thank you for showing how you have accomplished everything that you've accomplished. I'm really excited for the series that's to come. Um, I'm really excited for the other videos. I understand that fear in the beginning where everyone thinks you're crazy for being a farmer. Um, and that fear of if you fail, how they're gonna just throw it in your face. <laughs> so, um, I understand that and it's really scary. <laughs> we have been having one thing after the other. Um, the house we have now has 33 acres but it was hodgepodge together pretty bad. There was no furnace, like I mentioned in one of my other videos. So luckily my daddy's a contractor and he has helped me tremendously. Um, I am able to do anything on a house minus the like technicalities of inside the furnace that I'm not. I'm like the grunt worker, you know, I can physically make or build anything that I want. All because he taught me that anything worth having is worth working for. Nothing good ever came easy. And I'm an American, not an American. <laughs> so, um, I'm not afraid to try, even though it sucks when you fail. Um, failure is just learning one way not to do something. So I'm going to wrap this up. I hope you guys enjoy um, maybe learning a little bit more about me, maybe learning something about me you didn't know. Um, if anybody... If anybody ever needs somebody to talk to, because things seem really dark and really scary, and you don't know what to do, and you're afraid to talk to somebody because you're afraid you're gonna sound crazy or stupid or silly or like a crybaby, push those thoughts to the side and reach out to somebody, please. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. It's okay, it does not make you weak. In fact, you have to be really strong to be willing to ask for help when you really already feel like a burden. So, I get that. I get that. This is really embarrassing for me, so. I don't like being weak. I try really hard to be strong and to be the best me that I can be every day. I want to turn this farm, turn this homestead into a sanctuary for my family where we don't have to worry about food. <laughs> I also have dumpster dived. Um, I don't know if there are any dumpsters around here that aren't locked, but I might have to check soon. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. I almost forgot to add, um, if you guys want to watch the episode of Rooted, I'll put a link down below. And I really encourage you to watch it. It is very moving and very inspirational. So if you get a chance, go watch it. It's free for like the next day. 
So if you could, swing on over there or check Justin out on YouTube. Bye guys.